today we start our European campaign in the Europa Conference League. Now it's not the most glamorous thing, we'll have a look at the group stage shortly, but uh, I'm just delighted to actually be in Europe. So following on from the defeat in the last episode against Arsenal, we bounced back and won 1-0 at home against former side Barnsley. Thankfully for us, they had a man sent off in the seventh minute and missed a penalty, so Luis de Cordova's goal was the winning one. Next up was our qualifying game in the Europa Conference League, which we won 5-0 against Cork City in the home tie. Annabel Zarate with the brace, Sokolov, Ruby Rea and Luis de Cordova with the goals. We then suffered defeat back in league action away from home against Chelsea Chumbinho with two goals, from the one from the penalty spot and one just after half-time. And we were never really in this game. We then smashed Cork City 8-0 in the away leg. Zach Howes with a brace. Louis de Cordova with a hat-trick. Andy Dunn, Sebastian Calero, Vitaly Sokolov and even a missed penalty through in there for good measure. Resulted in a 13-0 aggregate win. Next up was a 3-2 home win against former side Birmingham City back in league action. Victor Hugo Cruz, Vitaly Sokolov and Guido Bomber with the goals in this one. They were 2-0 up going into half-time. Harvey Elliott and Jose Luis had put them in front. But it was a game we massively dominated and we fully deserved the three points. I feel like every side we're playing as a former side right now. We then beat Nottingham Forest away from home in the League Cup second round. Hugo Cruz, Zarate and Bomber with the late goal seeing us safely through to the next round. And finally, it was a one-all away draw against former side West Brom. Malungu had put them in front 54 minutes in. De Cordova equalised in the 64th minute. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We currently sit in ninth position. Seven points after five games isn't too shabby. Obviously, the two defeats against Arsenal and Chelsea are to be expected. And I think we've got results where you would expect us to get results. So that takes us to the matches for today's episode against Lausanne. Is that the name? I have no idea. And West Ham at home in the Premier League. Let's have a look at the Europa Conference League group stages and who we are going to be facing. So in terms of our group, Group H, you can't actually see it because my face is in the way. We have Valerenga, Vitesse and Lausanne from Switzerland, Netherlands and Norway. The, the groups, there's not many massive sides in it. Dynamo, uh, probably the biggest one in this group. Krasnodar is a decent side as well. Genoa from Italy. Uh, Zurich from Swiss, Braga. Uh, we've also got Bayer Leverkusen, probably the biggest side in the competition alongside ourselves, I would say. So the board are expecting us to get to the quarterfinals, so we need to get through the group stage. And I believe there's a first and second knockout round. Is, no, is there? I'm sorry, this is the first time I've played in this competition. So yes, first and second knockout round before we get to the quarterfinals. So we've got a long way to go to actually meet the board's expectations. And I don't believe any Europa League teams drop into this the same way the Champions League teams drop into the Europa League. Now, I'm not sure about that. I might be wrong. But um, at the very least, I think Bayer Leverkusen will be the hardest team we would have to face should we make it through the group stage and through the early knockout rounds. So that takes us swiftly on to our first game today, which is against Lausanne. Uh, away from home in the first leg, that is not too bad by my estimation. I, will, I want to see where our sort of quality level lies. I anticipate being able to beat this sort of side pretty conve uh, conveniently, consistently. Um, but you never know, we might end up getting a little bit of a surprise. This will be the side for today. Stefan Polk in goal, Nuno and Bomber at centre-back, Delonzo and Rada as our wing-backs with Buckle sitting in the defensive midfield role, Rui Rea and Sokolov in the centre of midfield with Cruz playing in behind Zaratia and De Cordova. Zaratia, by the way, hasn't scored a Premier League goal but is by far the highest average rate, and he is fantastic. Three assists in the Premier League, three goals and eight assists in all competitions in eight games. Obviously, they're massive, massively inflated because of the Cork City results in the previous couple of European games, but I'm really enjoying his work, and if he can add some more goals to his game at the same time, then we've got ourselves a real, real star in our hands. They come at us with a 4-5-1. I recognise no names. Let's get the kickoff. Highlight for us, Rui Rio with the corner bomber. Gets his head on it. We've seen that a good number of times now. The six foot six centre back getting on the end of the set pieces. We are aiming them towards him as well. So uh, that near post corner is definitely proven to be effective for us. As Zerati brings it down the right hand side, cuts inside the box. I'm not sure if that was a shot. I'm assuming it was a shot. If it was, that was dreadful. Another corner now. Rui Rea again, the man to take it. Zerati gets there first. And he can't get his header on target. A decent enough start to the game for us. But we really need to get a goal. And we have ourselves a penalty. 23 minutes in. And it'll be Annabelle Zorot Sokolov. Sorry. 
It's Sokolov. He's a penalty taker. Not so right there. He steps up and buries at the bottom left-hand corner. No chance for the keeper. And with his fourth goal of the season, we go 1-0 up. Another set piece. Right here this time takes it. He finds David Nuno at the back post. And he can't quite get his header on it. We have ourselves another highlight with only seven minutes to go of the first half. Radic rather with a throw-in on the left-hand side. He finds Sokolov in the box who goes for goal. And he's inches wide of that back post. An impressive performance by you so far. Not really taking our chances though. So hopefully we can do a little bit better than that in the second half. First highlight comes one minute in. Dekodova with the ball on the left-hand side gets dispossessed. And thankfully, we were able to stop that counter-attack before it even started. Sokolov to Ruby Rea took Dekord over once again on this left-hand side. He gets to the byline, he, he scores for goal. And I was about to absolutely shout at him for shooting that. Um, his seventh goal of the season. And he puts us 2-0 up 46 minutes in. I don't like it when you shoot from the byline. I don't mind when you score, though. At the front post, the keeper should do a lot better than that, definitely. But... Uh, I'm happy with that. Seven goals for the season for Deco Dover. He has been developing quite nicely, our young English striker. And hopefully, with a full season under his belt, he'll become one of the best English strikers in the Premier League. With only 20 minutes or so to go, we will look to make some changes to save some legs. Mario Buckle will come off for Chris Dubilbis in the defensive midfielder role. Guido Obama can come off for Zach Howes. And Sokolov can come off for Sebastian Calero. That's what I like about this squad. I feel like we've got some pretty capable uh, players on the bench. Might not be exactly the same sort of level as our first team, but getting pretty close there. And uh, it's definitely doing us not too bad when we have to rotate. Rada switches the ball to Delonzo. Walter Delonzo, by the way, is now a natural at right wing back. I'm hoping that now he is natural, would see an, improving, an improvement in his match performances playing in that position. And it'll only get better over the course of the season. He gets his first goal of the season. The two wing backs combining with only 12 minutes to go. This game is over. Can Lassio and get themselves a goal back? Um, I mean, is that offside? It's not offside. Let's have a look at this again. Hashani with a free kick. Does anybody touch it? Apparently he did. I don't believe he did. It doesn't look like he did, but they get a goal back. <laughs> a little bit uh, unfortunate by Stefan Polk there. He doesn't seem to have took two to give a dip in his average rate, and so maybe it wasn't his fault. But there we have it. Full time. Lassan one. Stoke City three. Let's move on to the West Ham game and see if we can continue our good form in the Premier League. So we're on our second game of today's episode against West Ham at home in the Premier League. No changes to our first 11. Any familiar faces here? I don't think so. Nothing that immediately sticks out. 4-3-3, pretty attacking by West Ham. We'll get the kick off and see how we handle that and how they can handle our attacking lineup. First highlight of the game comes 11 minutes in. We are on the attack down the left-hand side, Radic Rada. Gets stopped by the West Ham right back, but he whips it in. Zerati down to Delonzo. And he gets his second goal in two games. His second goal of the season and puts us 1-0 up 12 minutes in. This is exactly why I really need to focus on people who are natural in positions. Obviously, when they're only accomplished, you only get a certain amount of them attributes actually coming through during the match day. Getting, obviously, wing-backs are hard to find naturally because there's not many players who are natural at wing-back. Now that Delonzo is, I'm expecting huge, huge improvements from him. Another highlight now, 25 minutes in. Once again, Radic Rada starting the attack down the left-hand side this time with a throw-in. It comes to Delonzo again. <laughs> Walter Delonzo gets his third goal of the season. His third goal in two games. And the right wing back is having a fantastic attack and time of it. Vitaly Sokolov was the man with the assist this time. Switching the player from the left-hand side. Delonzo on the edge. And that is a fantastic strike. No chance for the West Ham goalkeeper. 34 minutes gone. We might have the first West Ham attack. But Cruz wins the ball on the right hand side. And Zarate is set away. He's in behind. It's a tight angle. And the West Ham goalkeeper makes a good save. And they deal with the outcome. Starting down the left hand side again with Radic Rada and a throw. And he plays it to Sokolov. Same ball again to Delonzo on the right hand side. Oh, he hits the post. Almost getting his hat-trick now. Walter, you're going to be top scorer at this rate. Keep it going. And now we have it, Stoke City 2, West Ham United 0. A fantastic performance so far. And the West Ham are sitting bottom of the table, newly promoted alongside ourselves. So we can't get too excited about this. But this is by far the best performance in the Premier League that we've had so far. And the thing I like about performances like this, even though the two strikers haven't scored or assisted, they're both playing above a 7. 69 minutes gone, we have a free kick for West Ham. Fatinho goes close there. And with only 15 minutes to go, we will look to make some changes. Frankie Grand is going to get some rare game time. 
Branko Milanovic I want to give some game time to as well. He can come on for Ruby Rea. And who else do I want to give game time to? Chris Dubelbis will get on for Mario Buckle in defensive midfield. Time has just ticked away in this second half. 87 minutes in. We're attacking on the right-hand side. Delonzo finds Zerati in the box. Oh, it's a great strike, but a fantastic save by Romano. I can't wait for Zerati to get his first goal in the Premier League so he can then start kicking on. But we do have a corner that's played in, and it's cleared by the West Ham defence. And now we have it then, boys. Stoke City 2, West Ham United 0. A fantastic result and a fantastic performance. And Walter Delonzo is coming into his own. So that result there saves us light in 8th place at the end of today's episode. 10 points after 6 games is not too bad at all. A few sides, few of our former sides above us in the league, but hopefully we can start late progging them and put a good run together. We've played some tough sides in the Premier League so far, so hopefully we'll have a little bit of an easier run over the next 10 games or so. I mean, this board, I'm really confused by it. Only giving us a B- minus for that 2-0 win against West Ham, a C- plus for the other win. Um... A little bit disappointed by that. Our transfer activity though has improved, particularly in the eyes of the fans. Now that they're seeing the likes of Annabelle Zerardi and Sokolov playing, A- minus and A- plus for them. Uh, A- plus for Luis de Cordova as well because they're delighted with his performances. And um, yeah, our club vision is looking pretty good on a B- plus right now. Looking forward to the next episode then. Um, it's going to be back in Europe, of course it is. Probably Zvalarenga. And then we'll look to play Vitesse in the episode after that. But if you have enjoyed today's video, boys, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.